Question 1. What is the correct temperature range for storing refrigerated food? A. 0 degree Fahrenheit to 32 degree Fahrenheit, negative 18 degree Celsius to 0 degree Celsius. B. 32 degree Fahrenheit to 41 degree Fahrenheit, 0 degree Celsius to 5 degree Celsius. C. 40 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit, 4 degree Celsius to 60 degree Celsius. D. 35 degree Fahrenheit to 38 degree Fahrenheit, 1. 7 degrees Celsius to 3, 3 degrees Celsius. Answer B. 32 degree Fahrenheit to 41 degree Fahrenheit, 0 degrees Celsius to 5 degrees Celsius. The correct temperature range for storing refrigerated food is between 32 degree Fahrenheit and 41 degree Fahrenheit, 0 degrees Celsius and 5 degrees Celsius, to slow bacterial growth. Question 2. How often should food contact surfaces be sanitized? A. After each use. B. Once a day. C. Twice a day. D. Once a week. Answer. A. After each use. Food contact surfaces should be sanitized after each use to prevent cross-contamination. Question 3. What are the symptoms of foodborne illness? A. Fatigue and headache. B. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. C. Sneezing and coughing. D. Itchy skin and rash. Answer. B. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. The common symptoms of foodborne illness include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. Question 4. How long can cooked food be safely left at room temperature? A. 1 hour. B. 2 hours. C. 4 hours. D. 6 hours. Answer. B. 2 hours. Coat food should not be left at room temperature for more than 2 hours to prevent bacterial growth. Question 5. What is cross-contamination and how can it be prevented? A. The transfer of bacteria from one surface to another preventable by cleaning. B. The transfer of allergens from one food to another, preventable by using separate utensils. C. The mixing of raw and cooked food, preventable by using separate cutting boards. D. The transfer of bacteria from one food to another, preventable by using separate equipment and proper sanitation. Answer. D. The transfer of bacteria from one food to another, preventable by using separate equipment and proper sanitation. Cross-contamination is the transfer of harmful bacteria from one food or surface to another and is preventable with proper sanitation and separate equipment. Question 6. What are the key steps in hand washing? A. Wet, lather, rinse, and dry. B. Soak, scrub, rinse, and shake off. C. Wet, soap, wipe, and dry. D. Soak, lather, dry, and sanitize. Answer A. Wet, lather, rinse, and dry. The key steps in hand washing are to wet hands, lather with soap, rinse thoroughly, and dry. Question 7. What is the difference between cleaning and sanitizing? A. Cleaning removes dirt, sanitizing removes bacteria. B. Cleaning uses chemicals, sanitizing uses heat. C. Cleaning makes things look good, sanitizing makes them safe. D. There is no difference. Answer. A. Cleaning removes dirt, sanitizing removes bacteria. Cleaning involves removing dirt and debris, while sanitizing involves using heat or chemicals to reduce the number of bacteria to safe levels. Question 8. Which foods are considered high risk for foodborne illness? A. Canned foods. B. Dry goods like flour and sugar. C. Dairy products, meat, poultry, and seafood. D. Fruits and vegetables. Answer. C. Dairy products, meat, poultry, and seafood. These are considered high risk for foodborne illness due to their susceptibility to bacterial growth. Question 9. How should raw meat be stored in a refrigerator? A. In the warmest part. B. 
B, on the top shelf. C, in sealed containers on the bottom shelf. D, outside the refrigerator. Answer. C, in sealed containers on the bottom shelf. Raw meat should be stored in sealed containers on the bottom shelf to prevent juices from contaminating other foods. Question 10. What are common allergens in a food service environment? A. Salt, sugar, and flour. B. Peanuts, tree nuts, milk, and eggs. C. Colorings and flavorings. D. Water and ice. Answer. B. Peanuts, tree nuts, milk, and eggs. These are common allergens found in a food service environment. Question 11. What is the correct procedure for using gloves in food handling? A. Reuse gloves for different tasks to save resources. B. Wash gloves instead of hands. C. Change gloves when starting a new task. D. Use one pair of gloves for all tasks to prevent cross-contamination. Answer. C. Change gloves when starting a new task. Gloves should be changed when starting a new task to prevent cross-contamination. Question 12. How should chemical sanitizers be used and stored? A. At any concentration and stored in any container. B. At the manufacturer's recommended concentration and in a labeled container. C. Diluted with double the water and stored in any container. D. Used in small quantities and stored open for easy access. Answer. B. At the manufacturer's recommended concentration and in a labeled container. Chemical sanitizers should be used at the concentration recommended by the manufacturer and stored in a properly labeled container. Question 13. What is the danger zone temperature range for bacterial growth in food? A. 0 degree Fahrenheit to 32 degree Fahrenheit, minus 18 degrees Celsius to 0 degree Celsius. B. 32 degree Fahrenheit to 41 degree Fahrenheit, 0 degree Celsius to 5 degree Celsius. C. 40 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit, 4 degree Celsius to 60 degree Celsius. D. 70 degree Fahrenheit to 125 degree Fahrenheit, 21 degree Celsius to 52 degree Celsius. Answer. C. 40 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit, 4 degree Celsius to 60 degree Celsius. The danger zone temperature range for bacterial growth in food is between 40 degree Fahrenheit and 140 degree Fahrenheit, 4 degree Celsius and 60 degree Celsius. Question 14. How do you safely thaw frozen food? A. At room temperature. B under running water, in the microwave, or in the refrigerator. C. In warm water. D. By leaving it outside overnight. Answer. B. Under running water, in the microwave, or in the refrigerator. Safe methods to thaw frozen food include under running water, in the microwave, or in the refrigerator. Question 15. What are the symptoms of an allergic reaction to food? A drowsiness and fatigue, B, hives, swelling, and difficulty breathing, C, coughing and sneezing, D, increased appetite, answer, B, hives, swelling, and difficulty breathing. Symptoms of a food allergy can include hives, swelling, and difficulty breathing. Question 16. Why is it important to avoid bare hand contact with ready-to-eat foods? A, to improve the flavor, B, to prevent physical contamination, C, to reduce the risk of transmitting foodborne illnesses, D, to keep hands clean. Answer, C, to reduce the risk of transmitting foodborne illnesses. Avoiding bare hand contact with ready-to-eat foods is important to reduce the risk of transmitting foodborne illnesses. Question 17, how should perishable food be transported safely? A. At room temperature. B. In an insulated container with ice packs. C. Without any temperature control. D. In a heated container. Answer. B. In an insulated container with ice packs. 
Perishable food should be transported in an insulated container with ice packs to keep it at a safe temperature. Question 18. What is the proper procedure for washing fruits and vegetables? A. Rinse with water only. B. Soak in soapy water. C. Rinse with water and then with a mild bleach solution. D. Wash with water and a produce brush. Answer A. Rinse with water only. Fruits and vegetables should be thoroughly rinsed with water to remove dirt and contaminants. Question 19. What steps should be taken in case of a suspected foodborne illness outbreak? A. Ignore it unless multiple people are affected. B. Report it to the local health department. C. Try home remedies. D. Wait for symptoms to pass. Answer. B. Report it to the local health department. In case of a suspected foodborne illness outbreak, it should be reported to the local health department for investigation and response. Question 20. How can the spread of viruses, such as norovirus, be prevented in a food service setting? A. By cooking food at high temperatures. B. By using gloves at all times. C. Through proper hand washing and surface sanitation. D. By avoiding the use of raw ingredients. Answer. C. Through proper hand washing and surface sanitation. The spread of viruses in a food service setting can be prevented through proper hand washing and surface sanitation. Question 21. What are the key components of a food safety management system? A. Inventory management and cost control. B. Personal hygiene, cleaning and sanitation, and food storage. C. Menu design and customer service. D. Food presentation and taste. Answer. B. Personal hygiene, cleaning and sanitation, and food storage. The key components of a food safety management system include personal hygiene, cleaning and sanitation practices, and proper food storage. Question 22. How should you handle a customer's food allergy request? A. Ignore it, as most people overstate allergies. B. Suggest they order something else. C. Take detailed notes and inform the kitchen staff. D. Only offer them a limited menu. Answer. C. Take detailed notes and inform the kitchen staff. When handling a customer's food allergy request, it's important to take detailed notes and inform the kitchen staff to avoid cross-contact and ensure safe preparation. Question 23. What are the guidelines for reheating food? A. Reheat to at least 100 degree Fahrenheit, 38 degree Celsius. B. Reheat to at least 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius. C. Reheat to at least 145 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius. D. Reheat to at least 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. Answer. D. Reheat to at least 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. Food should be reheated to an internal temperature of at least 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius, to kill any potentially harmful bacteria. Question 24. What is the proper method for cooling hot foods? A. Leave at room temperature until cool. B. Place in shallow pans and refrigerate. C. Directly in the freezer. D. Under cold running water. Answer. B. Place in shallow pans and refrigerate. The proper method for cooling hot foods is to place them in shallow pans and refrigerate to allow for quick and even cooling. Question 25. What role does time temperature control play in food safety? A. Determines the flavor of the food. B. Prevents overcooking. C. Reduces the risk of foodborne illness by limiting bacterial growth. D. Affects the color of the food. Answer. C. Reduces the risk of foodborne illness by limiting bacterial growth. Time temperature control plays a crucial role in food safety by reducing the risk of foodborne illness through limiting the time food spends in the temperature danger zone where bacterial growth occurs. Question 26. 
How should cutting boards be maintained to prevent cross-contamination? A. Use the same board for all types of food. B. Use separate boards for raw meat, poultry, seafood, and ready-to-eat foods. C. Wash with water only. D. Replace once a year. Answer. B. Use separate boards for raw meat, poultry, seafood, and ready-to-eat foods. To prevent cross-contamination, use separate cutting boards for raw meat, poultry, seafood, and ready-to-eat foods, and sanitize them properly after each use. Question 27. What is the best way to handle a choking incident in a restaurant? A. Wait for the person to cough it out. B. Offer them water. C. Perform the Hamlich maneuver or seek immediate medical assistance. D. Ask them to speak to determine the severity. Answer. C. Perform the Hamlich maneuver or seek immediate medical assistance. In the event of a choking incident, the Hamlich maneuver should be performed or immediate medical assistance should be sought. Question 28. Why is it important to regularly rotate stock? 5. O method e. A. To keep the inventory organized. B. To reduce the cost of goods. C. To use the oldest products first and prevent waste. D. To make space for new products. Answer. C. To use the oldest products first and prevent waste. Regularly rotating stock using the FIFO, first in, first out, method is important to use the oldest products first, which helps prevent waste and ensures food safety. Question 29. How do you identify and handle food spoilage? A. By the expiration date only. B. Ignore minor signs of spoilage. C. Look for changes in color, smell, or texture, and discard spoiled items. D. Taste the food to determine if it's spoiled. Answer. C. Look for changes in color, smell, or texture, and discard spoiled items. To identify food spoilage, look for changes in color, smell, or texture, and discard any items that show signs of spoilage. Question 30. What are safe practices for handling ice in a food service environment? A. Use hands to scoop ice. B. Use a clean, dedicated scoop and store it outside the ice machine. C. Reuse ice that has been in contact with food. D. Use any glass to scoop ice. Answer. B. Use a clean, dedicated scoop and store it outside the ice machine. Safe practices for handling ice include using a clean, dedicated scoop and storing it outside the ice machine to prevent contamination. Question 31. What are the correct procedures for disposing of food waste? A. Mix with general waste. B. Compost when possible and use designated bins. C. Dispose of in the nearest sink. D. Leave it on the kitchen counter. Answer. B. Compost when possible and use designated bins. The correct procedure for disposing of food waste includes composting when possible and using designated bins to prevent attracting pests and maintain hygiene. Question 32. How do you manage pest control in a food service establishment? A. Ignore small signs of pests. B. Regular inspections and preventive measures. C. Use over-the-counter pesticides. D. Close the establishment until pests are gone. Answer. B. Regular inspections and preventive measures. Managing pest control in a food service establishment involves regular inspections, preventive measures, and professional pest control services when needed. Question 33. What are the guidelines for using a food thermometer? A. Use it only for meats. B. Calibrate regularly and insert into the thickest part of the food. C. Guess the temperature. D. Use the same thermometer for raw and cooked foods without cleaning. Answer. B. Calibrate regularly and insert into the thickest part of the food. The guidelines for using a food thermometer include calibrating it regularly and inserting it into the thickest part of the food to ensure accurate temperature readings. Question 34. How can you prevent physical contamination of food? A. By cooking food thoroughly. B. 
wearing hair restraints, and using proper food coverings. C. Only serving vegetarian dishes. D. Avoiding the use of plastic utensils. Answer. B. Wearing hair restraints and using proper food coverings. To prevent physical contamination of food, it's important to wear hair restraints and use proper food coverings to keep foreign objects out of food. Question 35. What is the importance of personal hygiene in food safety? A. Improves the taste of food. B. Prevents the spread of foodborne illnesses. C. Makes the kitchen look clean. D. Is only important for the head chef. Answer. B. Prevents the spread of foodborne illnesses. Personal hygiene is crucial in food safety as it helps prevent the spread of foodborne illnesses through proper hand washing, clean clothing, and minimizing direct contact with food. Question 36. How should food be stored to prevent contamination? A. In any available space. B. In labeled airtight containers at the correct temperature. C. On the floor. D. Uncovered to save space. Answer B. In labeled airtight containers at the correct temperature. Food should be stored in labeled airtight containers at the correct temperature to prevent contamination and spoilage. Question 37. What are the guidelines for serving food to vulnerable populations? E. Key the elderly young children. A. Serve the same food as everyone else. B. Serve only raw foods. C. Follow stricter food safety practices and consider dietary restrictions. D. Serve food at higher temperatures. Answer. C. Follow stricter food safety practices and consider dietary restrictions. When serving food to vulnerable populations such as the elderly and young children, it's important to follow stricter food safety practices and consider any dietary restrictions. Question 38. How do you properly sanitize kitchen equipment? A. Rinse with water. B. Wipe with a dry cloth. C. Use appropriate sanitizing solutions and follow manufacturer's instructions. D. Sanitizing is not necessary. Answer. C. Use appropriate sanitizing solutions and follow manufacturer's instructions. Proper sanitization of kitchen equipment involves using appropriate sanitizing solutions and following the manufacturer's instructions to ensure effective reduction of harmful bacteria. Question 39. What is the protocol for handling a broken glass in a food service area? A. Pick up with hands and continue working. B. Leave it for later cleaning. C. Sweep or vacuum immediately and check for any stray pieces. D. Cover it with a cloth. Answer. C. Sweep or vacuum immediately and check for any stray pieces. In case of a broken glass, it should be swept or vacuumed immediately, and the area should be checked thoroughly for any stray pieces to prevent injury and contamination. Question 40. What are the guidelines for food safety during outdoor cooking events? E. G. Barbecues. A. Use the same utensils for raw and cooked meats. B. Keep foods at room temperature. C. Follow proper temperature control and prevent cross-contamination. D. Cook food partially and finish later. Answer. C. Follow proper temperature control and prevent cross-contamination. During outdoor cooking events, it's important to follow proper temperature control for cooking and storing food and to prevent cross-contamination between raw and cooked foods. Question 41. What are the steps to take when receiving a food delivery to ensure safety? A. Store it immediately without checking. B. Check the temperature and appearance of the food. C. Only check the expiration dates. D. Rely on the supplier's assurance of quality. Answer. B. Check the temperature and appearance of the food. When receiving a food delivery, it's important to check the temperature and appearance of the food to ensure it hasn't been compromised during transit. Question 42. How should you handle customer complaints regarding food safety? A. Dismiss them as overreactions. B. Listen carefully, apologize, and take immediate action. C. 
Tell the customer it's not your responsibility. D. Offer a discount and ignore the complaint. Answer B. Listen carefully, apologize, and take immediate action. Handling customer complaints regarding food safety involves listening carefully, apologizing for any issues, and taking immediate action to resolve the problem and prevent recurrence. Question 43. What are the guidelines for safe microwave cooking? A. Cook food for the shortest time possible. B. Stir and rotate food during cooking and check for even temperature. C. Use metal containers to speed up cooking. D. Only use microwaves for reheating, not cooking. Answer B. Stir and rotate food during cooking and check for even temperature. Safe microwave cooking involves stirring and rotating food during cooking and checking for an even temperature distribution to ensure food is cooked thoroughly. Question 44. How do you ensure proper ventilation in a kitchen to maintain food safety? A. Keep windows closed at all times. B. Use fans and ensure ventilation systems are working correctly. C. Ventilation is not necessary in a kitchen. D. Only ventilate during cleaning. Answer. B. Use fans and ensure ventilation systems are working correctly. Proper ventilation in a kitchen is essential for maintaining food safety, and it involves using fans and ensuring that ventilation systems are functioning correctly to remove cooking fumes and reduce heat. Question 45. What are the best practices for managing leftovers in a food service establishment? A. Store indefinitely until used. B. Throw away all leftovers. C. Label and date leftovers and use within a safe time frame. D. Only cool leftovers at room temperature. Answer. C. Label and date leftovers and use within a safe time frame. The best practice for managing leftovers is to label and date them and ensure they are used within a safe time frame to prevent spoilage and foodborne illness. Question 46. How can you minimize the risk of food poisoning during food preparation? A. Only use processed foods. B. Cook food partially. C. Follow proper hand washing, cooking, and storage guidelines. D. Taste food frequently while cooking. Answer. C. Follow proper hand washing, cooking, and storage guidelines. Minimizing the risk of food poisoning during food preparation involves following proper hand washing, cooking to the right temperatures, and storing food safely. Question 47. What is the importance of maintaining food at safe temperatures during transport? A. It affects the taste of the food. B. It prevents the growth of harmful bacteria. C. It's only important for long distances. D. Temperature doesn't matter during transport. Answer. B. It prevents the growth of harmful bacteria. Maintaining food at safe temperatures during transport is crucial to prevent the growth of harmful bacteria and ensure food safety. Question 48. How should you respond to a food recall notice? A. Ignore it unless customers complain. B. Remove the affected product from use and follow the recall instructions. C. Continue using the product until it runs out. D. Only inform the management. Answer. B. Remove the affected product from use and follow the recall instructions. Upon receiving a food recall notice, the appropriate response is to immediately remove the affected product from use and follow the recall instructions to ensure customer safety. Question 49. What are the key elements of a food safety training program for staff? A. Basic cooking skills and recipes. B. Personal hygiene cross-contamination prevention, and proper food handling. C. Speed and efficiency in the kitchen. D. Customer service skills. Answer. B. Personal hygiene, cross-contamination prevention, and proper food handling. A food safety training program for staff should focus on key elements such as personal hygiene, prevention of cross-contamination, and proper food handling techniques. Question 50. What are the requirements for labeling food for allergens? A. Allergens only need to be labeled if requested. 
B. Clearly label all potential allergens on the menu and packaged foods. C. Labeling allergens is optional. D. Only label the most common allergens. Answer. B. Clearly label all potential allergens on the menu and packaged foods. It's required to clearly label all potential allergens on both the menu and packaged foods to inform and protect customers with allergies. Question 51. How do you handle a situation where a staff member is ill? A. Allow them to continue working, but away from food. B. Send them home and disinfect their work area. C. Ignore it unless they are visibly very sick. D. Give them less demanding tasks. Answer. B. Send them home and disinfect their work area. If a staff member is ill, especially with symptoms that could impact food safety, they should be sent home, and their work area should be disinfected to prevent contamination. Question 52. What is the significance of the hazard analysis and critical control points, HACCP, system in food safety? A. It focuses on the presentation of food. B. It's a system for managing profits in food service. C. It's a systematic approach to identify and control food safety hazards. D. It's only important for large-scale food production. Answer. C. It's a systematic approach to identify and control food safety hazards. HACCP is significant in food safety as it provides a systematic approach to identify, evaluate, and control food safety hazards from production to consumption. Question 53. How should knives and other sharp kitchen tools be stored and handled? A. Store loosely in a drawer. B. Store in a secure and organized manner. Handle with care. C. Sharp tools should be avoided in a kitchen. D. Store on the counter for easy access. Answer. B. Store in a secure and organized manner. Handle with care. Knives and other sharp tools should be stored securely and organized to prevent accidents and handled with care to maintain safety in the kitchen. Question 54. What are the guidelines for effective food inventory management? A. Order as much as possible to reduce frequency of orders. B. Keep minimal inventory at all times. C. Rotate stock using FIFO, monitor expiration dates, and conduct regular audits. D. Rely on suppliers to manage inventory. Answer. C. Rotate stock using FIFO, monitor expiration dates, and conduct regular audits. Effective food inventory management involves rotating stock using the FIFO method, monitoring expiration dates, and conducting regular audits to ensure food quality and safety. Question 55. What are the common causes of cross-contact in a kitchen? A. Using the same utensils for all types of food. B. Cooking foods at high temperatures. C. Storing foods in airtight containers. D. Regular cleaning. Answer. A. Using the same utensils for all types of food. Common causes of cross-contact in a kitchen include using the same utensils, cutting boards, or surfaces for different types of food, particularly between allergenic and non-allergenic foods. Question 56. How should you handle food delivery at different temperatures? A. Store all food at room temperature for simplicity. B. Separate hot and cold foods, maintaining appropriate temperatures for each. C. Keep all foods in a warm environment. D. Focus only on the temperature of perishable items. Answer. B. Separate hot and cold foods, maintaining appropriate temperatures for each. When handling food delivery, it's important to separate hot and cold foods and maintain the appropriate temperatures for each to ensure food safety. Question 57. What is the best way to prevent slips and falls in a kitchen environment? A. Ignore small spills and clean at the end of the day. B. Wear any type of footwear. C. Keep floors clean and dry and wear non-slip shoes. D. Place warning signs only. Answer. C. Keep floors clean and dry and wear non-slip shoes. To prevent slips and falls in a kitchen, it's crucial to keep the floors clean and dry and to wear non-slip shoes for better traction.
Question 58. How do you manage food safety during large events or buffets? A. Serve all food at room temperature. B. Focus on presentation over safety. C. Ensure proper temperature control and regular replenishment. D. Use leftovers from previous events. Answer. C. Ensure proper temperature control and regular replenishment. During large events or buffets, food safety is managed by ensuring proper temperature control for hot and cold foods and regular replenishment to prevent food from sitting out too long. Question 59. What are the best practices for food packaging and labeling? A. Generic labels are sufficient for all foods. B. Use clear, accurate labels, including dates and allergens. C. Packaging and labeling are not necessary. D. Reuse labels to save costs. Answer. B. Use clear, accurate labels, including dates and allergens. Best practices for food packaging and labeling include using clear and accurate labels that provide essential information, such as dates, ingredients, and allergen warnings. Question 60. How should you handle and store different types of meat to prevent contamination? A. Store all meat together to save space. B. Store at room temperature. C. Separate different types of meat and store at the appropriate temperatures. D. Freezing is unnecessary. Answer. C. Separate different types of meat and store at the appropriate temperatures. Different types of meat should be stored separately to prevent cross-contamination and at the appropriate temperatures to maintain safety and quality. Question 61. What are the guidelines for safe salad bar management? A. Offer only pre-packaged dressings. B. Keep items at room temperature for easy access. C. Regularly replenish and maintain proper temperature. D. Salad bars do not require any specific guidelines. Answer. C. Regularly replenish and maintain proper temperature. Safe salad bar management includes regularly replenishing items and maintaining proper temperatures for both hot and cold foods to ensure safety and freshness. Question 62. How can you ensure that vegan and vegetarian dishes are prepared safely? A. Use the same utensils and equipment as for meat dishes. B. Prepare them in advance and reheat. C. Use separate utensils and equipment to avoid cross-contamination. D. Vegan and vegetarian dishes do not require special preparation. Answer. C. Use separate utensils and equipment to avoid cross-contamination. Ensuring the safety of vegan and vegetarian dishes involves using separate utensils and equipment to prevent cross-contamination with meat or other animal products. Question 63. What are the procedures for cleaning and sanitizing a commercial dishwasher? A. Rinse with water only. B. Use any standard household cleaner. C. Regular cleaning and sanitizing according to manufacturer's guidelines. D. Dishwashers do not require cleaning. Answer. C. Regular cleaning and sanitizing according to manufacturer's guidelines. The procedures for cleaning and sanitizing a commercial dishwasher involve regular cleaning and sanitizing as per the manufacturer's guidelines to ensure it operates effectively and hygienically. Question 64. How do you assess the risks associated with new menu items? A. Buy customer feedback after serving. B. Consider food safety, allergens, and proper preparation methods. C. Base assessment on the cost of ingredients. D. Only focus on taste and presentation. Answer. B. Consider food safety, allergens, and proper preparation methods. Assessing the risks associated with new menu items involves considering food safety, potential allergens, and ensuring proper preparation methods are in place. Question 65. What steps should be taken when a food thermometer is found to be inaccurate? A. Continue using it for rough estimates. B. Adjust the readings mentally. C. Calibrate it or replace it. D. Use personal judgment instead of thermometer. Answer. C. Calibrate it or replace it. 
If a food thermometer is found to be inaccurate, it should be calibrated if possible or replaced to ensure accurate temperature readings are maintained. Question 66. How do you manage food safety during a power outage? A. Use the time to clean the kitchen. B. Monitor temperatures and use alternative cooling methods if necessary. C. Continue operations as normal. D. Discard all food immediately. Answer. B. Monitor temperatures and use alternative cooling methods if necessary. During a power outage, it's important to monitor the temperatures of perishable foods and use alternative methods, such as ice or coolers, to keep food safe. Question 67. What are the best practices for reducing waste in a food service environment? A. Order more than needed to avoid shortages. B. Discard leftovers immediately. C. Portion control, inventory management, and composting. D. Waste reduction is not a priority in food service. Answer. C. Portion control, inventory management, and composting. Reducing waste in a food service environment involves effective portion control, careful inventory management, and practices such as composting to minimize unnecessary waste. Question 68. How should allergen-free meals be prepared and served? A. In the same area as other meals. B. With designated utensils and equipment and clear communication. C. Allergen-free meals are not necessary. D. Only offer pre-packaged allergen-free options. Answer. B. With designated utensils and equipment and clear communication. Preparing and serving allergen-free meals require designated utensils and equipment to prevent cross-contact, along with clear communication between staff and customers. Question 69. What are the procedures for reporting a suspected foodborne illness to health authorities? A. It's not required to report. B. Wait for multiple cases before reporting. C. Report immediately as per local health department guidelines. D. Only report if the customer provides proof. Answer. C. Report immediately as per local health department guidelines. In the event of a suspected foodborne illness, it is important to report it immediately to the local health department following their specific guidelines. Question 70. What is the role of a food safety supervisor in a food service establishment? A. To cook food. B. To supervise and train staff in food safety practices. C. To manage customer complaints. D. To focus only on food quality. Answer. B. To supervise and train staff in food safety practices. The role of a food safety supervisor involves overseeing and training staff in proper food safety practices, ensuring compliance with regulations, and maintaining a safe dining environment. Question 71. How do you handle raw and cooked foods in a buffet setting to prevent cross-contamination? A. Serve them on the same platter for convenience. B. Use separate serving utensils and dishes for each. C. Only offer cooked foods. D. Place raw foods at the beginning of the buffet. Answer. B. Use separate serving utensils and dishes for each. In a buffet setting, it's crucial to use separate serving utensils and dishes for raw and cooked foods to prevent cross-contamination. Question 72. What are the signs of pest infestation in a food service establishment? A. Frequent customer complaints. B. Signs of wear and tear on the building. C. Droppings, nests, or damage to food packages. D. High food costs. Answer. C. Droppings, nests, or damage to food packages. Signs of pest infestation include evidence such as droppings, nests, or visible damage to food packages and structures. Question 73. How should food safety records and logs be maintained? A. They are not necessary. B. In random order for confidentiality. C. Accurately and regularly updated. D. Only when inspections are due. Answer. C. Accurately and regularly updated.
food safety records and logs should be maintained accurately and updated regularly to track food safety practices and compliance. Question 74. What are the guidelines for serving food outdoors or in temporary settings? A. No different from indoor settings. B. Follow the same food safety principles as indoor settings. C. Serve only non-perishable items. D. Lower the standards for convenience. Answer. B. Follow the same food safety principles as indoor settings. When serving food outdoors or in temporary settings, it's important to follow the same food safety principles as in permanent indoor settings, including temperature control and hygiene. Question 75. How do you ensure that delivery drivers maintain food safety standards? A. Trust that they know what they're doing. B. Provide training and ensure they have proper equipment. C. Regularly change delivery services. D. Only use in-house staff for deliveries. Answer. B. Provide training and ensure they have proper equipment. Ensuring that delivery drivers maintain food safety standards involves providing them with proper training and ensuring they have the necessary equipment to maintain temperature control and hygiene. Question 76. What are the best practices for cleaning and sanitizing tableware and utensils? A. Rinse with water only. B. Clean with a cloth and reuse. C. Use a dishwasher or three-compartment sink system. D. Use disposable utensils only. Answer. C. Use a dishwasher or three-compartment sink system. The best practices for cleaning and sanitizing tableware and utensils involve using a commercial dishwasher or a properly set up three-compartment sink system to ensure thorough cleaning and sanitization. Question 77. How can you incorporate food safety into menu planning? A. Focus only on popular items. B. Consider food safety risks associated with different dishes. C. Plan based on the easiest dishes to prepare. D. Ignore food safety in menu planning. Answer. B. Consider food safety risks associated with different dishes. Incorporating food safety into menu planning involves considering the food safety risks that may be associated with different dishes, such as cross-contamination or temperature control. Question 78. What are the requirements for employee health and hygiene in food service? A. Personal appearance is the only concern. B. Frequent hand washing, proper uniform, and reporting illnesses. C. Health and hygiene are personal choices. D. Only chefs need to maintain hygiene. Answer. B. Frequent hand washing, proper uniform, and reporting illnesses. Employee health and hygiene requirements in food service include frequent hand washing, wearing a clean and proper uniform, and reporting any illnesses that could impact food safety. Question 79. How do you manage a food safety incident in your establishment? A. Cover it up to avoid bad publicity. B. Take immediate corrective action and document the incident. C. Blame the staff. D. Wait to see if it happens again. Answer. B. Take immediate corrective action and document the incident. Managing a food safety incident involves taking immediate corrective action to address the issue and documenting the incident for further analysis and prevention. Question 80. What are the key differences in food safety practices between different types of food establishments? E. G. Fast food viz. Fine dining. A. No differences. All establishments follow the same practices. B. Fast food focuses on speed, fine dining on presentation. C. Each type of establishment has specific practices based on the menu and service style. D. Fine dining has stricter standards. Answer. C. Each type of establishment has specific practices based on the menu and service style. The key differences in food safety practices between different types of food establishments are based on their specific menu items, service style, and customer expectations, requiring tailored food safety approaches.